Nevadans are battle-born, but lately we've been tested like never before. So when COVID came to Nevada, Senator Cortez Masto went to work. She got loans for small businesses that saved half a million Nevada jobs and worked with President Biden to provide stimulus checks and tax cuts. Senator Cortez Masto got new funding to keep Nevada's first responders on the job, too. Call Senator Cortez Masto at 202-224-3542 and tell her to keep delivering relief for Nevada. Paid for by Majority Forward. This episode is sponsored by Pataday Once Daily Relief Extra Strength, the first and only 24-hour eye allergy itch relief drop, now without a prescription. You know that when eye allergens are on the attack, the itch can last 24 hours. But a single drop of Pataday Once Daily Relief Extra Strength works on the cells that make your eyes itch fast. In minutes, you get relief that lasts 24 hours. That's a full day and night in one drop. Make it a Pataday. Available everywhere. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 447. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the program. Hope everybody's having a fantastic Tuesday night. Well, as fantastic as a Tuesday can be. Personally, not a big fan of Tuesdays, folks prefer Mondays. I know, I know, there's a big argument to be had there, I guess. But Mondays, for me, are never as bad as Tuesdays. You know, Mondays, coming in off of the weekend, still flying a bit high, right? You know, had a good time, usually, hanging out, whatever it is that you enjoy doing. Hopefully, you did that during the weekend, right? And then I'm still flying high, usually, come Monday. Yeah, yeah, great weekend. Then Tuesday, well, reality sets in. That the weekend is four days away. So yeah, not a huge fan of Tuesdays, folks. But you know who's going to be not a fan of Tuesday or Wednesday or any day? Well, that's going to be Ghislaine Maxwell after this trial. After a jury of her peers convicts her. Because, folks, there's a mountain of evidence... And I don't know how anyone looking at the evidence that's compiled here can say that Maxwell is innocent. Now, believe me, I am open to be swayed. If you have the evidence, if there's evidence out there that I'm missing, please provide it. But from everything that has been unearthed, everything that has been shown in court documents, everything that has been said by the survivors themselves and by corroborating witnesses, I don't know how anyone can come to any other destination besides one that includes Maxwell being guilty. Now, obviously, whatever we say doesn't matter, right? Whatever her legal team says doesn't matter either. What matters is what's going to occur in that courtroom. And if the prosecution is even halfway competent, they should be able to wrap this case up in a nice little bow and send Maxwell upstate for probably the rest of her life. I mean, that's that's how much evidence is here. You'd have to be a real sorry, sad prosecutor to not be able to see this one home, right? I mean... You see some of the cases that they bring, and there's nowhere near this kind of evidence. And it's still a slam dunk for the federal government. Again, what a 97 and some change percent of the cases that the federal government brings against people, they win. So, I'd love to see Maxwell get hammered here, and I'd love to see the court and the prosecution do their jobs. And serve a bit of justice. Because one thing that has certainly been lacking in this case for all of these decades is accountability and justice. And that goes for the government as well. There's been no accountability for their behavior throughout this whole entire ordeal. They have gotten off scot-free throughout this whole entire thing. The only person who caught any real heat who got any serious blowback, was Acosta. And that's good, I'm glad he did, he deserved it. But he should be the only one? 
That's that's where we stop, huh? We only go halfway, right? What did Mob Deep say? You can't be halfway crooks. And in this case, you can't go halfway when it comes to these kind of people. This is something that has to be prosecuted all the way home until every last one of these people faces justice. And anyone working for the government who took part in this whole entire disgusting ordeal during the first trial, those people need to be held accountable as well. And hopefully, sometime in the fall now, when Maxwell finally stands trial, we get to see that train of justice come rolling right into the station. Today's article is about the whole entire hubbub between Maxwell, her legal team, and the prosecutors over video about the alleged documents that the government supposedly kiped off of Maxwell, made copy of, copies of, and then put back into her files, right? That's the allegation, you know, uh, loosely, what's going on. And her legal team wanted that evidence, right, so-called evidence of the video of the situation. And they went to the judge looking to get that video. So let's see what Adam Klasfeld and Law and Crime have to say about the attempt to get the video of the alleged incident between Maxwell and the guards. Headline. Judge declines to hand over video evidence of dispute between Ghislaine Maxwell's lawyers and jailers. This article was authored by Adam Klasfeld. And this article was from yesterday, folks. I had this one um, saved in the uh, pile here. And I was going to do it yesterday, obviously, but with the Maxwell case being um, postponed, Obviously, uh, that took priority. So today being a relatively slow day, it just happened to work out that we had this one sitting right here on top of the pile. Less than a week after Ghislaine Maxwell's lawyer claimed her client got a mysterious black eye in jail, a federal judge declined to, or- declined to order the Metropolitan Detention Center to turn over videos of an alleged incident involving attorney-client communications to the accused sex traffickers' defense lawyers. So, the judge is not going to turn over the tapes to the defense lawyers. Now, I'm kind of torn in a situation like that because... I'm really big on transparency, right? And for everybody involved. I think that transparency is the proper way to go. And if there was some sort of incident, then the court definitely has to take a look at the tapes. And then if they deem that it's necessary to turn them over, then perhaps they should. But I don't know if the court is going to bend to those kind of requests from defense attorneys, because if they do, they're going to have to do it system-wide. And there's no chance that an average person like me or you is ordering anybody get any tapes inside of a jail, okay? Zero chance it's happening. I don't think they understand that while you have your basic rights while you're in prison, you are now remanded to the custody of the state. And there are parameters, and there are rules, and there are guidelines, and a whole slew of things that I'd want nothing to do with, that's for sure that I find to be absolutely disturbing and inhumane in most regards. But you know what? That What happens because I, of, of that? Because I don't want to be in a situation where I end up in prison? Well, I stay out of trouble. I don't hang out with people like Jeffrey Epstein. Pretty simple, right? So Maxwell has made her own bed here. The jail conditions are shitty, there's no doubt. And the thought that the judge is going to turn over some sorts of sort of tapes to her lawyers or anything like that is pretty much a pipe dream. And one thing I will say about Nathan, Judge Nathan, is she's not treating Maxwell any different than anyone else would be treated here. She's giving Maxwell, you know, the same parameters to work by that these other high-profile inmates that have been in this facility have been given. And in fact, Maxwell has given more room, right? More wiggle room, more time with her lawyers, more time on the computer, 
all sorts of different things. So Nathan has been more than fair to Maxwell and her lawyers. And I think a lot of that is to help avoid, obviously, some sort of bogus appeal moving forward. So um, Nathan has to make the judgment on what is permissible in the case, what's not permissible in the case. And so far... The L's are stacking up for Maxwell. And here is another one for her and her big, high-profile legal team that wants to tell you how smart they are. But guess what? A lot of bark, no bite so far. Maxwell's counsel, Bobby Sternum, claimed her client's guards confiscated her legal papers on April 24th. And again, look, I'm not saying that uh, Bobby Sternum is guilty of, you know, bringing contraband into a, a, a jail cell, right? Or to their client. Definitely not saying that. As much as I don't think that their legal team is doing a great job or is as high profile as they'd like to think they are, I don't think that they would be, you know, involved in any sort of contraband per se. But that said, let's not act like it's never happened before. We know that lawyers have smuggled shit in to their clients. We know that there's lawyers who have smuggled guns in to their clients. So, you know, look, the the courts and the Bureau of Prisons, they have to be very stringent in these matters. And obviously they saw something that they thought was out of bounds and they acted. And according to this ruling by the judge, they were within their bounds. So once again, it looks like Team Maxwell throwing a bunch of doo-doo at the wall, hoping some of it will stick. The court has ensured, and will continue to ensure, that Miss Maxwell has the opportunity to meet meaningfully and confidentially with her lawyers in light of all relevant circumstances and consistent with the treatment of all other detained inmates in BOP custody. U.S. District Judge Allison Nathan wrote, you know, and that's that's what it really comes down to, right? To be consistent with the, the treatment of the other prisoners. Everybody has to be treated the same. There has to be the same sort of treatment for Maxwell and everybody else that's at the facility. Why her lawyers think that Maxwell should get better treatment than anybody else is just beyond me. I know that they're paying, you know, top dollar for, you know, the uh, uh, business class. But guess what? You're back in coach with the rest of us this time around. And that's just the way the cookie crumbles. You know, there's no uh, Waldorf Astoria in prison. There's no Frederick Fakai in prison. Oh, you might have a Selly in prison who will give you a quick haircut. But it certainly isn't going to be the $550 shampoo and cut that you're going to go get down in Manhattan that Maxwell is so used to. So yeah, this is the treatment that average people get in prison. This is the way prison goes. There's rules. And again, Maxwell, for her to act like she's getting treated worse than anybody else is just ludicrous. She's getting treated better. I can't drive that point home enough. The isolated incident that took place on April 24th, 2021, and the serious allegations leveled by MDC legal counsel and defense counsel in no way undermine the court's conclusion that Ms. Maxwell and her lawyers are fully able to prepare for trial. The court is confident that all parties recognize the importance of this going forward and in advance of the upcoming trial. So... Nathan's basically saying, look, I have all the confidence in the world in the Bureau of Prisons, which uh, uh, she's <laughs> not me. OK, how about we'll, we'll just put it like that. I don't have any confidence in the Bureau of Prisons or the Department of Justice or the federal justice system in general or these lawyers or the judges. You get where I'm going with this, folks? All of these institutions that we grew up being gaslit about. Oh, the FBI, they, they care about the American people. Oh, yeah. Okay, sure. The CIA is great. They're really good. They're they're just worried about the defense of America and and they're they're just doing their job, right? They're just, you know, doing whatever they have to do, torturing people and give me a break with the CIA, all right? And the rest of the alphabet agencies can go get tossed as well. That said, I don't see where Maxwell's lawyers and defense team think they're going to have any sort of 
a, you know, a, a upper hand here or a high ground here with this sort of strategy. They're being very combative, very, very combative. And I think it's time ill spent. I think they'd be doing themselves much better if they'd worry about the trial that's coming. All right. There's no stopping this trial now. She's not getting bailed out. Stop with the histrionics. This is not the WWE. Okay. You better worry about getting down to the brass tacks of it and worrying about your client's innocent, innocence or guilt. Because let me tell you what, this is all fine and well right now, all of this nonsense. But the combative nature of Maxwell's legal team and their continued nonsense is not going to play out well. Maxwell's lawyers threatened the jail with litigation after the alleged incident and asked the judge to order sharing the videos capturing it with the defense. Again, posturing, we're going to sue you, well, we're going to put this motion into play, that motion into play. Really what it all comes down to, when you rip through all of the facade of it and you kick down the door, what it really comes down down to is obfuscation and them trying to make this drag out a little bit longer, as long as possible, that's what they want. Inevitably, that's what they want. And the cynic in me says, well, her lawyers especially want it because, you know, the meter is running, right? Those videotapes must be preserved in light of defense counsel's preservation letter, Judge Nathan wrote. So the defense asked for the federal government to preserve those videos of the exchange between Maxwell's lawyers and the guards. And in in consideration of that letter, those videos will be preserved by order of Judge Nathan. Now, I'm guessing that Judge Nathan has seen these videos already, by the way, folks. If Ms. Maxwell or defense counsel are entitled to view or receive copies of those materials as, as a matter of law, they should be provided. To the extent defense counsel is seeking entitlement to those materials from this court, that application is denied. So, as a matter of law, if they have a, a standing, a legal standing to receive those tapes, then it's on the table. But as of now, with what they've brought to the table... Nathan's saying, no, you're, you have not brought what is necessary for these tapes to be released over to you. In addition to raising attorney-client confidentiality concerns, Maxwell's lawyers also have accused the jail of intimidating and harassing their client. Well, if anyone would know about intimidation and harassment, according to the survivors, it would be Maxwell. So... Uh, who cares, right? I don't, I don't buy it, all right? I guess that's really what it comes down to. I don't buy it. The federal government knows the spotlight is on them. They know that people are paying very close attention to what's going on with Maxwell. All of these allegations from Maxwell's legal team are just a bunch of BS, in my opinion, and meant to muddy the waters like usual. They're professionals at that, right? These people have, you know, slick PR professionals working with them and, you know, a whole bevy of other, you know, uh, crisis professionals. And they're coming up with strategies all day. It's like boiler room over there, folks. One of Maxwell's recent court filings alleged that she got a black eye for unknown reasons and did not report it to the guards for fear of retaliation. It just don't make no sense, right? She didn't... Re- so, an unknown black guy, she didn't report it to the guards for fear of retaliation. What did uh, you know, the invisible man show up, slide on between the bars, and, and give her a, a one-two combination? Drop a three-piece on her? I mean, give me a break. It's so ludicrous. It's obvious that whatever happened to her eye is self-inflicted. Fell asleep with some glasses on, rubbed her eye so hard. I'm not saying she punched herself in the face, folks, right? I don't, you know, I don't know if she did that. But uh, the, the whole premise that the mysterious bruise was caused by something other than her own, you know, uh, 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 accidentally causing it, I, I just find to be ridiculous. I'm going to need to see big evidence of that, right? 
So I don't even know where her lawyers are going with this whole the whole uh, uh, brew strategy, but it's fallen flat, right? Take a Coca Cola, open it, leave it out for two days, and that's how flat this strategy has fallen for them. Shortly after her arrest in July 2020, Maxwell was placed on suicide watch and has been under varying levels of restrictive watch since that time. Her lawyers allege that the Bureau of Prisons overcorrected to the lapses that allowed Jeffrey Epstein to die in their custody in what has been ruled a suicide. Oh, I see what you did there, Mr. Klasfeld. I appreciate that. What has been ruled a suicide. Nothing definitive. We don't know. All right, none of us know one way or the other. We can have our suspicions, but unfortunately, we have a shitbag federal government that is not transparent, that never wants to be transparent with the people, and instead, they'd rather leave hanging answers out there for people to run with. So, you want people to run with it? People are going to run with it. But I agree, right, with the way Mr. with, with the way uh, Klasfeld coined it there. And what has been ruled a suicide? Allegedly a suicide. Basically saying the same exact thing. She's checked at night every 15 minutes, with light shining in her eyes so that they can check her breathing. Maxwell's attorney, Baghdad Bob, a.k.a. David Marcus, told the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit last month in an appeal of rulings denying her bail. The Americans are not in Baghdad, folks. Come on. What are you, crazy? The Iraqi National Guard, the Iraqi Republican Guard, they have met the Americans. They're not in Baghdad. Meanwhile, back in reality, there's Americans all over Baghdad. They're invading Baghdad. You see it on your TV. So that's what Oscar David Oscar uh, David Marcus reminds me of. Baghdad Bob getting up there, trying to gaslight people, trying to spin doctor things. Buddy, nobody is buying it, okay? They're doing it because Jeffrey Epstein died on their watch. And again, she's not Jeffrey Epstein, Marcus added later. No, she's not Jeffrey Epstein. But according to these survivors and according to mm, the federal government, she's a co-conspirator, okay? An alleged abuser. In my opinion, a general all-around scuzzbag. So put that in your pipe and smoke it, Mr. Marcus. Shortly after those arguments, the Second Circuit's three-judge panel unanimously denied Maxwell's appeal, but their brief summary order invited Maxwell to take up her complaints to the trial judge, and that is the proper course, right? The appeals court wasn't hearing that. They were there to hear about the bail. And now she takes this back to Maxwell, I mean back to uh, Nathan, and, you know, Nathan decides one way or the other what's going on here. To the extent Maxwell seeks relief, specific to her sleeping conditions, such requests should be addressed to the district court, the panel wrote. And look, I, I've said earlier, if she's not suicidal, then I agree she should be taken off suicide watch. There has to be other um, you know, levels to this where the government can keep her protected from others and herself and not have her on suicide watch, right? Are they that incompetent? I mean, I don't put anything past the Bureau of Prisons, but I mean, come on. Judge Nathan did not comment on Maxwell's allegations regarding her treatment in custody. The court intimates no views as to whether some of some other actions or process is appropriate or proper in light of either side's allegations, her ruling states. This court's obligation in this case, and any other, is to ensure that the defendant is given the opportunity to meet with her lawyers, engage in confidential attorney-client communications, and prepare for trial. Mindful of that obligation, the court declines to take further action at this time, it continues, because, let's be real, all of those parameters are being met. Maxwell has ample time with her lawyers, ample time to go over facts in the case, and all of this other stuff is theater. Nathan ordered the government to confer with legal counsel for prison officials to make sure Maxwell has access to attorney-client materials, as they should. She should be provided every last bit of it. You want it? Fine. Dump it on her. Bring in a dump truck truck, and dump it right in her cell. 
in any additional inc- if any additional incidents arise, defense counsel shall properly confer with counsel for the government regarding those incidents and seek to resolve any such issues swiftly, responsibly, reasonably, and amicably. The judge added, if that fails, the parties may write to the court jointly indicating their views, identifying and justifying any specific application being made. So basically, if you if the two sides can't get along and they can't figure it out, then the judge will have to step in and decide what's going to happen one way or the other about any future issues that might arise, the same way she did here. Maxwell pleaded not guilty to allegations of sex trafficking and conspiring to groom and abuse women and girls for Epstein's predation. She is currently slated to stand trial on those charges July 12th, And she will be tried separately on allegations that she perjured herself in a defamation lawsuit filed by Epstein survivor Virginia Roberts. And just to add here, like I said, this article was from yesterday, and it was before the Maxwell case was postponed. So that's why it still states July 12th here. But the ruling is in the article. Obviously, you'll be able to click that in the description box, and you'll be able to check it out for yourself. But folks... Come on. Maxwell, her legal team, and all of their attempts to this point have been effectively cut off at the legs. And soon, the time for self-aggrandizement, the time for obfuscation, the time for kicking the can down the road, Well, that time is very shortly going to be at an end. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that go with this episode can be found in the description box. Alright folks, I'll be back tomorrow morning, and we will pick up where we left off. Have a great night, everyone. The heart sets us apart It beats and ticks And over the years it's taken a few licks But your heart doesn't just beat for you Beats for your friends and family and your grandson Drew. So let's make it stronger. Cause a healthy heart loves longer. Every heart deserves a specialist. Find yours at Dignity Health St. Rose Dominican Hospitals. Hello, human kindness. Nevadans are battle born, but lately we've been tested like never before. So when COVID came to Nevada, Senator Cortez Masto went to work. She got loans for small businesses that saved half a million Nevada jobs and worked with President Biden to provide stimulus checks and tax cuts. Senator Cortez Masto got new funding to keep Nevada's first responders on the job, too. Call Senator Cortez Masto at 202-224-3542 and tell her to keep delivering relief for Nevada. Paid for by Majority Forward.